Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. In this short video I want to tell you some useful things that I think will help you if you come into forever winter blind with zero prior knowledge. But I should help some of the existing players too. So let's jump right in. Later down this video I'll tell you how I got my first million credits and a lot of weapon mods. Number one, get more water fast. Love it or hate it, I hate it by the way, the water system is here to stay, for a while at least. So I'll list a few things where having more water helps. Vendor unlocks and I think this is the most important one. Reaching 16 water for example unlocked my rig vendor. Another one lets you recruit mercenaries to fight for you, weapons, mods, etc. These guys are very important. Innards upgrades. You can have all sorts of cosmetics and functional upgrades to your base if you have the required amount of water. So you need to cap out your water, I believe 50 is the maximum you'll need for some of the innards upgrades. I forgot where I learned this from and I'm sorry for that as I usually give credit for these kinds of things. So yeah, my bad. Select the mech trenches and make sure your entry point is set to the elevator. Load in and you will find yourself in a large tunnel with some railway tracks. Walk to the end and you will find some stairs that you can climb. And then you enter an L-shaped corridor, this door can be closed or open. If it's closed, you opening it will create some noise that can pick up the attention of nearby squad and the mech. But it doesn't matter, they lose interest before they can find you. At the end of the corridor, crouch and wait for a couple of seconds. If you can't see a squad moving in the bottom room to the from right to left, go down and start looting everything. There are a couple of possible water spawns and I always found at least one barrel of water in here. Get everything for extra money. I believe I did extract with 30,000 worth of goods at some point and that's pretty much worth it for the two minutes it will take you to do this run. If you take a fast character you can do it in one minute and 30 seconds or something. After you are done looting exit this room, drop down and start pushing towards your extraction area. It's pretty straightforward from here. Number 2. Go like a complete hobo into your first raids, as you will die a lot. Learn the layout of the maps, the spawn patterns of the enemies, and of course the loot, and yeah, so on. After you are a bit more comfortable, take some ammo and actually try to kill a few enemies here and there, but in this game you need to know when to stop. Now talking about that, number 3. Know when to stop. I'm GTA 4. If you are in the open and are attacked, it's usually a good idea to just run. Some enemies can catch up to you, so there is a time to run and there is a time to fight. Go around the corner or something and pick them off one by one as they come in into your sights. Or a building, same thing. Just don't try to... <laughs> face tank bullets. This is not that kind of game. And this applies to looting also. There are moments where hunter killers will be deployed. When you see that message on your screen, it's a good idea to start sprinting toward an extraction point. As those guys are coming, they know where you are and they stop and not and you can't win. You can kill one or two, sure, but yeah, don't even try it. Odds are, if they are onto you, your loot is worth something, so you better extract. Number four. When you get a fetch mission, read it carefully as it will tell you what you are after. Different Different factions have different looking units so as you would expect. So in the European drones components mission for example you look for the cylindrical drones that fly around. Just enter scorched enclave from the cemetery and look around. Or do what I tell you later as I think I give you a better alternative. Number 5. Prestige your characters first. This might be obvious for most but don't spend your XP on perks if the character you play is at prestige level 1. If it says 1 out of 25 <laughs> you got some work to do my guy. All perks are lost when you increase your prestige level anyways, so this is why it's pretty pointless to invest in that skill tree at this point. And besides the skills that unlock rigs for your character, nothing is really important to be frank, just increase that prestige. Each level I got around 40 HP on my shaman I, I believe. I'm not sure. On level 7, so on level 7 I got an extra 300 HP or something. That's pretty neat if you ask me. I also think it increases some other stats. I couldn't find out what exactly. Number 6. Unlock new rigs ASAP. The rigs are permanent by the way, meaning you won't lose it like you lose your weapons for example. Only the attachments on it, still. Those cost a couple of thousands a pop at most. A weapon costs around 10k minimum without the attachments. So the rig is the most important thing at the beginning in my humble opinion because that helps 
you hold more stuff of course it acts as an armor sometimes when you run like a coward deflecting some of the shots and depending on what type of horde that you are uh, there are different tricks for different purposes you know the loot in this game comes in two sizes normal and large so depending on what you want to loot you might pick a different trick that has the layout you want number seven don't sell your items to just any vendor as some will offer you significantly less money for your loot before selling check out each vendor to ensure you always sell to the one offering the most for your items number eight if you die don't worry <laughs> yeah don't worry you can go back in and follow the tombstone on the compass if you reach it you retrieve your stuff easy game <laughs> number nine be a ninja not leroy jenkins stealth is the name of the game here while we don't have a way to see if our stealth is effective or not you kind of notice when it works because you are left alone <laughs> you know so crouch when there are enemies nearby and stay in cover no point alerting them wouldn't it be better if you let them aggro some other faction for example then just jump in to finish the last guys off when then try to loot the big pile of bodies yeah this is what i do number 10 base upgrades if you upgrade your base for example with one of the crafting terminals you, your water is not consumed that's just the barrier of entry but the 500k credits are gone number 11 to craft better ammo at home keep some of the whiskey and cigarettes you find in your raids that ammo stuns the enemies for a second or something which is pretty cool number 12 vendors have a stop timer so if you know you are going through your ammo fast buy out their stock so you maximize the amount of bullets you can use but this shouldn't be an issue in this game because <laughs> one you shouldn't be using uh, a gun that often and two you have multiple weapons vendors each with its own supply of that particular ammo type number 13 you can do your drone components mission on this map also i do it with a couple of hired mercs just a bunch of old guys who face tank bullets for me and while you do your water run sometimes two of those drones spawn near the extraction point just stop and say hello if you can it's pretty cool and you get a lot of attachments and parts uh, and you do a bunch of quests you know and extra credits i recommend you do this after you get a better rig though so in mech trenches near the entrance to the extraction area you often need to dodge enemies in your runs you can just hire four cheap mercs that return to you if they die by the way and you extract so the only way to lose them is for you to die and they are pretty cheap so you get them with you treat the run like a regular like a regular water run but at the end here engage with a squad or two if you can but make sure you are in a favorable position and don't die good weapon xp more loot and more character xp if you farm it for prestige for example four to five thousand xp for five minutes with minimal risk it's worth it i believe just don't bite more than you can chew and you should be fine So yeah, thank you for watching and correct me if I was wrong on something and feel free to add to the discussion. If we get a lot of cool tips and tricks, I'll make another video with them. Until next time, take care and see ya.